Listen, when I seen Cat Williams go down to that radio show and completely roast Wanda Smith, I mean, he tore her apart for playing with him. That's the first time I seen someone get roasted so bad without even using a cuss word and smiling at your face the whole time. Now, right? I mean, get, 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 get this inmate out here. If, if, if you can't get your blood pressure down, you can't call me down. Oh, whatever, little mama. If your cholesterol is 600. Whatever, little mama. I'm little mama's baby daddy. No, you little mama. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hey, and what are you? <clears throat> no, y'all gotta go see that. He went crazy. But recently, the comedian appeared on an episode of Club Shay Shay, a weekly podcast hosted by three-time Super Bowl champion and ESPN host Shannon Hart, and opened his life as a comedian and took shots at other comedians who have disrespected Shannon. Cass spoke about how he wanted to set the record straight and blasted comedians like Ricky Smiley, Cedric the Entertainer, Kevin Hart, and Steve Harvey. Cass said, you've made a safe place for for the truth to be told and have watched all these lowbrow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face and tell you straight up lies yeah cat went crazy they literally broke the internet i mean i think the interviews over uh 3.8 million views in less than 24 hours but shannon wanted to know what was cat's relationship with steve ricky cedric and cat claims they were a group cat accused him of spreading rumors about him being on drugs and more I remember seeing articles back then of him getting in a fight with some teenager, apparently, and him just, you know, with crazy pictures about him and stuff. So um, who knows? That could have been propaganda like he's referring to. But Kat said, I don't harbor any resentment towards any of these entities because I can't be jealous. Kat said the reason Steve stopped doing stand up comedy was not because of his shows, but because he lost a comedy battle against Kat in Detroit. Man cat went crazy everywhere i'm not interested in talking to people unless it's like a larry king or somebody of an amazing ilk that i would actually want to go talk to in real life okay um i don't do it so i can sell product and i got things to sell so let me come talk um you have a great product they sit here and you said out that mouth you stole friday when it's four minutes and 24 seconds into a two hour and 40 minute interview and he's already getting to it that's when you know you in for a blast like this is one of those this is literally like i seen the comment of uh somebody said this is a free three hour special by uh cat williams and it's true honestly it's pure poetry emotion from him um uh, being able to tell a story and making it funny and dropping gems as well some people are going to call him crazy all this stuff but uh it was definitely a lot of substance in this one but the Cedric Entertainer one, I mean, well, let's finish this Ricky Smile. At the next, the one I was in, <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. But, this man told you he had Cat Williams role. He was going to be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was going to be the Santa Claus. Now, let's three quick points. <laughs> you mean in Hollywood, they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weighed 145 pounds. That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was going to play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Well, I did. Damn. And Ricky Smiley's actually like, uh, I don't know why. I see a lot of his clips on like um, Facebook. You know when you do your ads on the back end or whatnot. I spent a few, a uh, couple times just um, going through feed or whatnot. And I get a lot of his, um, I don't know if it's skits or whatnot. But anyways, he does play a good like, no, he, he shouldn't be able and that's to do that. An athlete that's been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man, you stole that. Oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody, it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He could have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was. Sir, no one. Why no? He was with KD. He beat up Terry Crews. Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he, what? So well, Ricky, Ricky Smiley knows this. And I don't know why he would lose a child and come on the air and start lying. That's why people believe in rituals right there. It's because, well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie, but I can tell you this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was auditioned number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. 
Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie. Okay, and say crazy. respectfully, humbly, guys, if we talk about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a race. Well, we'll get back to that. Let's get into the Cedric, the entertainer, stealing a joke. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018? You came to see me at the comedy store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. Like, what doesn't line up? I, this is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade making all black men think he got the best life. Now, that's interesting, though, for him to um, do the same exact thing that he did. Um, that is, I mean, it could be inspiration at the end of the day. I wouldn't, or it could be imitation, but if not, nah, but at the end of the day, let's be honest, Cat, Cedric, Steve, I know he says Steve doesn't do stand up anymore, but Cat, Cedric, Steve and Ricky Smiley are in town and you have to pick one of their stand ups to attend. Which one are you going to pick? That's coming like, realistically speaking, Cat. Cat bring the city out without with little promotion, too. It's because it's sometimes better than a phase on, too. So. Last but not least. Nah, we got to play some of this real quick. He literally tore her apart. He didn't cuss one time. He didn't, like, never raised his voice. He didn't say nothing too crazy and literally tore her apart. And she started it. She started it, too, but I know she regretted it. All right, so we go to a break. Shout out to Forever 21. Yeah, <laughs> this collection. That's right. Shout out to I don't remember me for a while now, right? I'm not going to write one of the Jones, though. Get this inmate out here. If, if, if you can't get your blood pressure down, you can't call me down. Uh, whatever, little mama. If your cholesterol is 600. Whatever, little mama. I'm little mama's baby daddy. No, you little mama. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hey, and what are you, girl? <laughs> You probably shouldn't talk about sizes. No, okay. You big on the radio. Yes, and you're, and you're crazy. Turn it down. And you're yes, ma'am. I've never been to prison. Uh, you have 19 felonies, times. no convictions. Yeah, Knock yeah. it off. Prison okay. and jail aren't the same. No, no, okay, no, no, okay. no. Calm, no, no, no. Calm, Only calm, one of us has $12 calm, worth of jewelry on. Okay. No, no, no. No, 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 no. That all is available. If you want to have Wanda's jewelry, please go to Sit Go or Quick Trip at any point. If you buy two packs of Newport 100s, they will give you everything Wanda has on right now for $7.99, and it comes with a free car wash. Won't you come on down? Yeah, we can't get to snap it. You know. It un who like think about a comedy, you know how they did verses with some of like the old, not old but like the the classical legends, the the generational acts. Imagine if they did that with comedy. But there's literally besides Dave, I think Dave and Cat will probably be a good one. But if there was a comedy, um, yeah, if there was a comedy face off or verses, who would y'all put next to Cat? In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a. That's all allegedly, whether it may be true or not. Kevin Hart is, I mean, the chocolate dropper era to when his special, like, what, well, we'll go back to like 2015, 16. Kevin was killing it. I know his stand up was like you could actually watch an hour long stand up of Kevin. So, um, the plant part, uh, you know, I'm not sure about yeah, that. So how think? simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It did it things for his people. Ooh. That's why, you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. Yeah, he's, he was really saying some, some shh. The fact that he's so, like, fearless into what he's saying and the fact that he's actually you know, been like this, like this isn't him trying to get some publicity or trying something new to be a shock jockey. Like this is the Cat Williams we know and we, we remember. So um, the fact that he's relentless in him speaking his truth and speaking his peace, you know, you can admire, that's something definitely to admire. And the fact that he's 19, 20 years into this, still doing 100 city tours, it's crazy. But what y'all think about this whole thing? Is y'all, is he right 
for um not necessarily right but you know just imagine that you feel like there's people teaming up against you and you gotta back against the wall you gotta state your case and whatnot so um and they're all pretty talented in their own rightful ways they all created pretty dope legacies but in terms of stand-up it's fair to say cat got it but what y'all think let me know in the comments